Yankees plenty battle all the way through. Remember, they opened the third game of the World Series in their own ballpark in Cincinnati on Saturday. Now Walters is ready to pitch to Joe Gordon. The first man up in the last half of the fourth, and the pitch is very high. It's over Joe's head for a ball. Ball one. Gordon's second appearance at the plate today. The first time up, he had a fly ball to center field. Walters getting a sign out there now. Here's the next pitch. It's a ball inside. A fastball very high. Away. Makes it ball two. Nobody on and nobody off. The Yankees are batting in the last half of the fourth. Walters stands there on the pitching rubber, getting a sign from Lombardi. Next pitch, he hits a high foul up over the roof to the left, back at third base. It's ball two and strike one on Gordon. Reds talk it up out there in the infield. Werber, Billy Myers, Lonnie Fry, Frank McCormick. Pitcher has his sign out there again. Here's the next pitch now. It's a swing and a bouncing ball to Werber. Werber's up with the ball. There's the plank across the infield. He's out. Pass play. Bill Werber to the first baseman McCormick. Werber went to his left with that ball and cut in front of the shortstop, Myers. Grab that ball and throw him up. Now the Yankee first baseman, Dave Dahlgren, gets the hand as he comes up. Dahlgren, you remember, started the rally in the third inning with a double down the left field line. Here's Babe stepping into the batter's box. He's had two hits in the series so far. They hit in the first game and hit in the second. Walters is getting ready. Here's the first pitch. It's a ball inside close to a right-handed hitter. Dahlgren backs all the way out of the batter's box. Cincinnati outfield playing deep and straight away. Here's the next pitch to Dahlgren. Dahlgren swings and misses a curveball around his knees. Ducky pulled him on that curve. Quite a bit of speed on that ball. Count is one and one on Dahlgren. One out and nobody on in the last half of the fourth. Here's the next pitch to Babe. He hits a long high fly. Way back into left field. Wally Berger is backing up near the fence. Back, back, back. It's a home run. Over the left field fence. Babe Dahlgren just did a home run over the left field fence. Here he comes around third. He's jogging down the third baseline. And to Babe Dahlgren goes the honor of hitting the first home run in the 1939 World Series. Well, that certainly made a hit with all the Yankee partisans out here. Remember that swell Gillette Tech Razor will make a real hit with you. Will make a real hit with you. Richard Pearson coming up. The score now is 4 to nothing in favor of the Yankees on Babe Dahlgren's home run. Here's Pearson up. First pitch, he swings out and misses a strike. It's a slow curve right around his knee. Pearson went for that ball and struck. There's two out and nobody on. One run in. Here's the leadoff man, Frank, his sign. Here's the pitch. A swing and a roller. Right play. Lombardi to McCormick. Said he hit a little roller right out in front of the play. Body called for that fast, but Big Beasel Lumpen fired it over to the fast, but Big Beasel in the last half of the one hit. Between the New York Yankees and the Cincinnati Reds, the Yankees going out of the field, and the score, 4 to nothing. In favor of New York, they scored three runs in the third and one run in the fourth. Now the Reds are coming to bat for their turn in the first half of the fifth inning, and their great first baseman, Frank McCormick, is going to be the first man up. So far, the Yankees have made eight hits in the ball game. Cincinnati has made no hits. We repeat these things for the benefit of the fans over the nation who might be tuning in late. The score is 4 to nothing in favor of New York as the Reds come to bat for their turn in the first half of the fifth. Pitchers, Pearson a right-hander, and Walters a right-hander. Well, here's Frank McCormick up there in the batter's box now to see what he can do about getting a rally started here for Cincinnati as we start the first half of the fifth. Pearson holds his cap down firmly on his head, gets all set. Now the wind-up, and here's the first pitch to McCormick. It's a ball, low and outside. First time up, Frank hit a fly ball to Joe DiMaggio in center field. Pitcher has a sign out there again. He's all ready. Here's the next pitch. A foul up over our heads here, up into the upper deck of the stands. And it's one and one for McCormick. McCormick. Person has a sign out there now. Here's the next pitch. A slow curve right around his knees. It's a call strike on Frank. That was really an awfully nice pitch. Right in around the knees. Makes it ball one and strike two. Person's already out there again. Here's the next pitch. He struck him out. A curveball right around his knees. McCormick went for a slow curve around his knees and struck out. That's five strikeouts for Pearson. Now the next batter is the catcher, Lombardi. First time.
time up, Lombardi hit a fly ball to the left fielder, Georgie Selkirk. Kirsten's getting his time. Wind up on the first pitch. Lombardi looks at a fastball very wide, knee high for a ball. Ball one. Selkirk in left, DiMaggio in center, Keller in right. Rolf, Rossetti, Gordon, and Dahlgren around the Yankee infield. Fastball right across his waist. The strike call makes it one and one on Beezer. Big Beezer Lombardi batting for Cincinnati in the first half of the fifth with one out and nobody on. Marty Pearson getting his side again. Here's the next pitch. He swings and there's a foul right below our boot down here. Ball one and strike two on Lombardi. Drive. Pearson takes his time looking around the infield, checking up on his defense. Everybody in place. He's already out there again. Now the wind up. Here's the next pitch. He swings. There's a ground ball to Pearson. Pearson has the ball. There's the fake to first. He's out. Pearson to Dahlgren for the second out. Yankees peg it around. Now the next batter is the Cincinnati center fielder, Harry Kraft, who struck out the first. Here's Kraft up. Pearson getting a sign from Bill Dickey. Two out and nobody on in the first half of the fifth. Here's the pitch. He swings at a slow curve and misses. Pearson has that slow, tantalizing curveball breaking beautifully out there today. Crosses it up with a fast curve. Nice change of pace. Low fastball. Keeps that fastball low. Swing and a miss. That same slow curve. Harry Kraft went all the way around trying to get that ball to ride. Perhaps through there, through your radio, you could hear that ooh from the crowd as Kraft swung. Pitcher's getting ready again. Here's the next pitch to Kraft at the ball. A fastball high makes it ball one and strike two. Nobody on for the Reds. Two out in the first half of the fifth inning of the second game of the 1939 World Series. Two right-handers, Pearson and Walters pitching. Here's the next pitch. Ball outside. That was a sidearm fastball that was way outside to a right-handed hitter, Harry Kraft. Kraft pulls his cap down firmly on his head, waves that bat around. Pearson's getting his sign again. Here's the next pitch. Slow curve, but too low. Kraft watched it go by. It's a ball. Beans Reardon, who's back at the plate, went right down on his knees to watch that ball come in. It's ball three and strike two on Kraft. Pearson's getting ready again. Here's the next pitch. He struck him out. A curveball right around his waist. A lot of speed on that one. And Pearson struck him out to notch his sixth strikeout of the day. Kraft struck out for the second time. And that's the end of the first half of the fifth inning of this ball game. The second game of the World Series between the Cincinnati Reds and the New York Yankees. This is Bob Elson, who's had the pleasure of bringing you the first half of the ball game today. And now for the second half of the ball game, here's my colleague, Red Barber, who's all set to do a swell job for you for the last half of the game. All right, Red, come in. Thank you very much, Bob, and I just hope that my work matches that of yours on the first half of this afternoon's ball game, which sees the Yankees right now out in front four to nothing. I'm afraid that there's going to be a recommendation made among the major leagues, judging from the work of roughing yesterday afternoon and Pearson this afternoon, that uh, ball clubs coming into the World Series should have their number one and two pitchers come up with September sore arms, or maybe even extend the sore arms just a little bit farther back than September. Pearson has only allowed one man to get on a base on ball, then a DP jumped out. Now here is Red Roll, first up, last of the fifth. Then a crowd takes a call strike as Bucky Walters knuckles that hard one over the outside slice, waist high. It's 4 0 in favor of the world champions. The outfield is slightly toward right on Roth. There's a bounding ball to the right side, a slow one. Fry up with it, throws to McCormick in time by two steps, and Roth is out. Fry having to come a long way over toward his left, over toward his gloved hand. One up and one down for the Yankees. 4 3 in case you're scoring, second or first, and last of the fifth. Getting in now is Charlie Keller, who has two extra base hits so far in the series. He seems to lead a charm life, bouncing extra base hits off of outfielders' gloves. The one off Goodman's yesterday and off Burgers today. Keller, in a crouch, batting left-handed. Swing, there's a high foul. Back into the stands behind third for strike one. One out, nobody on. Four nothing. Favor of the Yankees. New ball put in play by way of where the third baseman who rubs it, puts it over to Walters, who wasn't satisfied with that. Stands back in the mound now. Blond, slender, bow-legged right-hander, converted from a third baseman several years ago. Put up over his head once. Now pitches a sharp curve low under the knees. One and one. One ball, one strike. Keller has one for two this afternoon. He has two hits so far out of six trips up in the series. Swings as a line drive, hit into left field for a solid base hit. Berger takes it on one big bound, throws it to second, and Keller's content with the single and holds it first base. And there is Keller's third hit. It's the first one that wasn't an extra base hit, and it's the first one that won.
Sutton bounced off of an outfielder's glove. Sharp single into left for his second straight hit. That is hit number nine off Walters. And now left-handers Grissom and Sharpton and Cincinnati's bullpen and back to right center field get up to start working. That takes a curve through there for call strike one. The defense, the outfield, way around defense, the outfield, way around it. Myers is a step in for it. Myers is a step in. Hits it right back to Walters who whirls, throws to Myers. Hits it right back to Walters who whirls, throws to Myers. Play. Just the red went on the Yankees this afternoon. And at second base who threw on two first base to McCormick. Thus the double play was completed. The first the Reds have come up with this afternoon. No runs, one hit, and nobody left for the Yankees. Lonnie Fry says, the Gillette Tech Razor made a big hit with me right from the start. This is the easiest shaving razor I ever used, bar none. It whisks off my tough beard. That's about the second World Series game. We'll pause now for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is W Chicago. Monty Berger, first step for the Reds, followed by Billy Myers, and then, and apparently it is to be Walters who's deep after Keller's sharp single in the left field. Pen. Wally Berger, looking for pen. One. Ball one. Two A. A superlative so far pitched a perfect ball game. Face pound back to the mound. The throws to first and Berger is out. Wally Berger fell away from an inside pitch that had him tied in. Go right back to Pearson. And Pearson has faced 16 men to get it down. To start the six. Right to inning, a fastball. This is Bob Elson. Inning, a fastball. Pitch is fast one right through there. Pearson so far this afternoon has kept those bases just as clean of runners as your Gillette Tech Razor will keep your face free of stubble. There's a bounding ball right back to Pearson. It's an easy chance. The throws to first, pitch it to first, and that's all for Walters. And it was nothing across for the Reds in the top of the sixth inning. And Pearson continues to go his amazing way. And his ball. You know, yesterday we asked you fans to wire us your opinions of the sensational new Gillette Tech Razor and this World Series broadcast. Well, from faraway places throughout the world, telegrams and wireless messages have flashed in like this radiogram from the USS Trenton. Congratulations from the crew of the USS Trenton at Lisbon, Portugal, on the way you handled the first game of the World Series. Swell game, fine reception. And from Joseph Pondexter, governor of Hawaii, thanks to Gillette and a lot of baseball fans all over the world. One telegram after another brings word of high praise. Your baseball broadcast is swell, and so is your new Gillette Tech Racer. Delman D. Jones, Chicago. I couldn't get by without my new Gillette Tech Racer. Matt Gallup, Newark. My men all use Gillette blades with satisfaction. Charles J. Gishka, manager of a Baltimore softball team. I've always been enjoying a clean shave every morning with the Tech Razor and Gillette Blue Blade, and can certainly recommend Gillette 1,000%. But Keeley, New York, that's the way they go, and no wonder. The Gillette Tech, spelled T-E-C-H, is brand new and revolutionary in design. All right, Red Barber. Mel Dickey, first up, last of the six, takes the first pitch, a sharp curve above the knees, and calls strike one. Walters over his head, comes back. Dickey swings as a trickle foul on the ground back of first base. Earl Coombs in the coach's box, knocks it down, throws it right back to Walters. Nothing in two to Dickey. There's one for two this afternoon. A sharp single that drove in a run in the third inning. The Yankees went ahead with a three-run bunch. Five hits in there, too. Walters throws. Dickey swings. There's a long drive in the right. Back goes Goodman away back and throws it down right back against the stands with the small of his back against the concrete rail in front of the lower right field stands. Goodman makes the catch. And Dickey's long line drive is snared for off number one, the last of the sixth. Joint Selkirk has one for two. Left hand hitter. Where's number three on the small of his back? Slightly open stands. Now feel around toward right. Wallace comes down. Selkirk takes a fast one right through there. Call strike one. The umpiring in the World Series is always of a high standard. But I can't recall any finer umpiring ever than the umpiring we've seen so far in this 1939 Classic. The pitch is a change of pace that hits the ground in front of the plate and bounds up. Of course, a ball. The plate umpire, Beans Ridden, immediately calls for it, examines it, to see if it's all right. Leaves it in play on water return. The umpires are ridden. Back of the plate. Summers. First base. Benelli. Second. McGowan. Is it third? The National League umpires through the middle. The American League umpires first and third. Ball is pitches to Selkirk. George swings. It's a change of pace foul. Out behind right field into the lower deck. Got a hold of it. Was hitting out ahead of it. We're just delighted to know that you folks are enjoying the broadcast. The broadcasts, which are on three 
shortwave stations sending of course the broadcast all over the world on 245 radio stations. We also know that you'll enjoy shaving with the Gillette Blue Blade. Zerkri so takes a pass one up there around the fingers. And now two and two. Balls two strikes. One out, nobody on for the Yankees, last of the sixth. Four to nothing, they were in New York. They're playing in their own Bronx backyard. Ballers have been baiting reds from the National League throws. Selkirk swings as another long foul out into the lower right field stands. And it's still two and two. Selkirk is having a lot of fun, should we say, on the practice tee with these last two swings. Maybe this is the one that's going to be for keeps. Get two out of bounds without penalty strokes. Then scored right, right side of the infield back. Wallace pitches, Selkirk swings, fouls this one straight back onto the netting. This is the first of Selkirk's fouls that... Uh, club will be able to get the ball back. This will hit the netting and, of course, can be retrieved. The body walks out to the mound to have a little conference now. Bucky Waters. Billy Myers out of choice. Sam leans down. Pulls a little play out from his spikes. Frank McCormick. That one with a bash to be back in the Bronx playing ball. Talking up behind first. Wallace pitches to Selkirk. Strike three called. A sharp curve over the inside just across from the hands. Selkirk turns and rather slowly walks out. That is the third strikeout for Bucky Waters. It is the ninth strikeout of the ball game. Selkirk kicks a little bit to play an umpire in. This is the first time that an umpire's decision on a pitch or a play has been questioned for one second. Selkirk still saying something back over his shoulder. Now he's in full swinging stride, walking back in toward the dugout. Stepping in, take his turn, is Joe Gordon. Going over two this afternoon, hitting right-handed. The defense swings around toward left. Myers at short stops, about four paces over toward third. Leans back toward second to see the sign that Lombardi is putting on for Wallers. Gordon stands erect, now crouches, swings and misses. Wallers throwing that hard knuckler down low over the outside corner. Nothing in one. Two out, nobody on. Nothing, New York four. Second game of the series. Wallace pitches. There's another knuckle, and this one is way wide and out of control. Ball one. Hard catcher, back of the third. Barry Coombs back of first for Cincinnati. It's Wallace and Lombard in the battery. The infield is McCormick, Fry, Myers, and Werber. Yep. The pitch is foul back into the stands. Just as we started to give the outfield, so we'll give it to you now. Berger in the left. Harry Kraft in center. And in right field is Ivan Pittman. One ball, two strikes. Joe Gordon up there hitting, getting back in after stepping back to dust off his hands. Wallace looks down, very poker-faced. Throws, a sharp curve is beaten into the ground foul. Count hold, one and two. The big news of this ball game this afternoon is Marty Pearson and what he has done. Wallace throws, low outside curve for ball two. Marty going down into his right to hold it up. 2-2. Two, two. two out. Base is empty. Walsh from the Yankee second baseman. Draws and Bucky pitches. A fast ball that gets way on the outside. Lombardi grabs for it with his bare right hand and just barely ticks it and the ball goes all the way back to the stands. Of course, it's neither a wide pitch nor a pass ball as you do not have either one of those battery errors unless there is someone on base to advance and thereby profit. So it's just ball three. Three, two. Down comes the full pitch. It's swung on and missed for strike three and the fourth strikeout. Bucky Walters and the tenth strikeout of the ball game. And this is the first time, this is the first time that the Yankees have gone down with nothing across so far in six innings. Because the Yankees, even though they didn't score in the first, second, and fifth innings, got a base hit. But in the last of the sixth, it was one, two, three, and out of there. At the end of six full innings, Four runs, nine hits, and no errors for the Yankees. For the Reds, not a run, and not a hit of Marty Pearson. There has been one red leg to reach first base. Billy Werber, who has been taking this afternoon, yesterday he was hitting at the first good pitch that came in. Werber, who has been taking today, ran the count to 3-2 and then got ball four in the fourth inning, the first man up. Ronnie Pryor, right in back of him, ran the count to 3-2 likewise. But... Werber went down on the 3-2 pitch, Fry swung and missed, and the double play for the Yankees as Werber was cut down at second base. Bill Dickey to Frank Rossetti. So he counts. For the 18 out, the only resident.
get on, and that was fixed on the DT, the double play. Second official try in this day. And that feels way around to what left. That feels way around to what left. Sharp one just over the inside. Sharp one just over the elbow. Vicky has handled him. Jimmy Wilson coaching back at first. On the outside, the knees, and it's Miss Pearson, slender right to command this play. It's been a long time ball to the center. There's Joe DeVaggio on his mule going away. Back to Vaggio on his mule going away. Right across the road from the brow pass. And catches it. One away in the top of Red, who so far, second is Joe Gordon and Shorty. DeVaggio just made that first left. There's Charlie Kelly. Seven. Ball one. And the open stance. Ball two. And off the open stance. Red Rock is playing wide and a little close. As he throws, there's a foul straight back, landing on the netting right underneath our mutual broadcast assistant booth. A two and one. Pearson struggles at the moment, changing his uniform. One up, a body on. Throws, straight two calls. That was a sharp curve that just picked up the outside corner at the knees. Pearson is working on the corners of the plate this afternoon, inning after inning. Twist throws, drive swings. There's a high pop-up down toward the right side. First baseman Darwin comes under it, hovering for it, squeezes it for the up. Two up, two down in the seventh. And the stands have been rather quiet this afternoon, watching how efficiently Marty Pearson is working, eyeing his every motion. Just as efficient for that baseball. You'll find a combination of a Jeanette Tech razor and a blue blaze efficient mornings. Apple Goodman, the crotch swings and fouls it straight back over our heads. Strike one. Two up, two down. Goodman, the hitter, standing fairly deep in the box. Four to nothing, play for the Yankees. Got to way around toward right. Pearson delivers, Goodman swings, has a long fly ball way back out of the left center. There's a match going and pulls it down. for the Reds for the seventh consecutive inning. The Yankees are coming in for the last half of the seventh with Dahlgren, the batting star of the 1939 Fall Classic to be first up, followed by Pitcher Pearson and then by Frank Presetti. Dahlgren has two for two this afternoon, a double and a home run. And his double started things happening. When he hit it, it was a nothing-nothing ball game. A couple of moments thereafter, three runs were in, then into the Yankee hopper. Then in the fourth, he hit what now stands as the only four master of the series. A home run drilled well out into the top section here at New York, which is the long field left field. Yesterday afternoon, it was Dargan who drove in the first of the Yankee two runs with a double. So he has three for five, two doubles, and the home run, which means he's hitting 600 so far. He's driven in two runs, one yesterday and one today, more than any other of his teammates. Here he is now. Two for two, a perfect day against Bucky Walters. Now feels around toward left. Dog in the right-hand batter, crouches, swings and misses. Big curve ball up around the shoulders. Strike one. For some reason or other, several of the Yankee pitchers began warming up in their bullpen. Maybe it's just conservativeness on the part of Joe McCarthy, and maybe Pearson's arm doesn't feel so good. Dargan swings and fouls it right back into the body's mitt for strike two. In the Yankee bullpen are four right-handers, Hadley, Hildebrand, Murphy, and Chandler. Some of them are now working. First man up last of the seventh, Dave Dargan. He wallows the Reds throws, way on the outside, for one. One and two. If you expected that Dave Dargan lead the offense for the Yankees, that's what he's doing. Swings and misses for strike three, and Walters finally caught up with him for the afternoon. It's the first time he's gone out. That's the third straight strikeout victim for Bucky Walters, by the by. That is his fifth strikeout. And Pearson comes up to hit for himself. Let's listen to the applause. And here is Pearson, a right-handed batter, taking his position. Now Pearson slightly toward left. Marty takes a fastball over, but under the knees low. Ball one. One up and one down. Dargan stopped for the first time today. Ball 
those works. Fastball swung on. There's a high pop up back into short left field. Myers retreats from shortstop, presented everybody out of the way, and Bill makes the catch high above his head. He's off Pearson, and it's two up and two down. Pass to the seventh. There's Frankie Crusetti. Flash out there on the left side of the infield. Defense. Round foot left slightly. Infield upper step because of Crusetti's speed. The outfield back. The little man can poke one if he gets a hold of it. Ball is pitches. Misses inside. Waist high. Ball one. Billy Werber running in suspicious of a bunt. So someone pulled a string attached to the front of his uniform blouse. Ball is wasting no time. Comes back. Fastball over but low. Ball two. Crusetti's ahead 2-0. Oh. The leader looks down now to Art Fletcher back to third to see if there's a sign on whether he'll take this pitch. It's good. Send the right-hander throws. It's in there. Swung on and foul down into the day. Good one. Four to nothing. Favor the Yankees. Yesterday, we had several wires wanting to know well, how in the world can you and Bob Elson up so high and back of home plate at the mutual booth to see whether these pitches are high or low. Ball is throws. Misses on the outside for ball three. Well, I think Bob and I uh, both agree that it's rather easy. You can see what's on the pitch, but you have to take from the catcher, the batter, and the umpire by their motions how high or low it is. There's a high pop up to the left side. Myers goes again back in the short left field, waiting under it now, and takes it. And it's nothing across for the Yankees for the second straight inning. Waller seems to be warming to his test. At the end of seven innings, it is of the world champion Yankees. Four run, not a hit. And Man, if you think shaving is good, to let blue blades. Learn for yourself how quick, easy, for yourself how quick, easy. Mutual Broadcasting CBN, the voice of the people of Chicago. They're on their run against the Yankees. Right two of Cincinnati's total output. Two of Cincinnati's total output. To left center, but Selkirk stands now. But using terms of a magnificent stands, ladies and gentlemen. Well, should I say it? And the hex will be on. It takes four nothing favor the Yankees. Well, having to get going to break into Pearson first, then come from behind. They have four runs trailing. They are taking up a ball game. And he swings, there's a base hit. That's a Pearson fan, a new Yankee fan. We didn't say anything about it. And now, there's never been a no-hit in the World Series. The best pitching performance in the World Series was by Ed Ruback of the Chicago Cubs way back, I believe, in 1906, when he delivered a one-hitter. And Lombardi comes out of the ball game, giving way for a pitch runner. A pitch runner. And it is Stan Bordegray at first base. That's and the first base grabs the crowd. Bordegray leading off first, one out. And now as far as Pearson is concerned, there's no... He's concentrating on winning a ball company. It's a low curve into the dirt. The dicky goes down. It's one and one. First base. Running for Lombardi. Logan holds the corner. on foul right back off Bill Dickey's mask. Bill shakes his head. Groggily. Russell left in the Yankee bullpen. Time to slipping a few. Effie. The Reds. Border Gray getting down off first. Powell down for the pass. Border Gray running. For third. Border Gray running. For the Jerry. Just walk. It's been the major things a long time. It's been the major things a long time. For the Dodgers. And from there to the Reds. Lotus running and that is the second division. Marty Burton's afternoon. Play with the Yankees. Border Gray leading off first. Burger takes high. Ball one. One and all. He isn't working easily. The Yankee bullpen, Russell, left hander, and Murphy, right hander. They're both turning on the heat. Pearson throws. Fastball through with low. It's now two and all. Two nothing. Red still fighting. Up there swinging. All standing in front of their dugout. None of them sitting back. All on their toes. All on edge. Pearson in position. Throws. Burger swings. There's a slow roller toward the mound. Pearson off. Picks it up. Throws to first. And Burger's out before he's more than two thirds of the way down. Pitcher to first. No runs. One hit. Cincinnati's only one. So far in the ball game. One man left. Top of the eighth inning. And that ends the first half of the eighth inning. To every man listening in, here's a sporting proposition. Without risking a cent, try the new Gillette Tech Razor and see for yourself how quick and easy shaving can be. Ask your dealer for the Gillette Tech and five genuine Gillette Blue Blades for only 49 cents. And then enjoy inning after inning of real shaving comfort. If you don't
all agree that today's Gillette Blue Blade and the Gillette Tech Razor make the easiest shaving combination that money can buy, your dealer will refund every cent. Men, you can't help but win on a proposition like this. And remember, it costs less than a penny a day to get perfect shaves with the world-famous Gillette Blue Blade. Now here's Red Barber. Barry Lombardi gave way for a pinch runner after he got the game's only single, and it was clean. It was definitely a clean hit. Border Gray ran for him, but never got off first. And now Willard Hershberger, former Yankee farm hand, comes in to catch. So it's little Willard Hershberger catches. First up for the Yankees, Red Rock. Left hand hitter, right hand to Bucky Wallace throws. Rock takes high. Four one. The pressure having to reach. Up above his left shoulder, high outside. Four to nothing in favor of the Yankees. Now deal slightly toward right. Wallace pitches on the outside again. Waist high for ball two. Bucky wipes at the perspiration. Let's follow it. Billy Werber with Rolf up there. Threat to push one down on the inside grass by third. The two nothing pitch is over for call strike one just above the knees. Rolf was taken. After Rolf will come Keller and DiMaggio. Wallace pitches, Rob swing, there's a high foul back of third over pretty close to the stands. Werber's going over against the stands, now leans in, and he can't quite get it. It's two rows of seats back. One row, he might have stabbed. It's just a strike, now 2-2. Two, two. Little Hershey. One of the genuine twitching tillers of baseball, never still, always antsy, moving around. Pumps the sign, Rob stands there, swinging that shillelagh back and forth. Here's Wallace over his head and down. Low inside for ball three. At the knees, Rob having to suddenly get stiff legged and pull himself back. Three two. Left side of the up step. Werber's not back. Two strikes on Rob. The pitch is swung on. There's a high fly out into left center. There's Crab loping in under it. Takes it. One up, one down for the Yankees. Last of the eight. Bucky Walters, ever since Keller's sharp single in the fifth inning with one out. He tied everybody in order. Got the Maggio followed the crack into a double play. But that pitching started after the Yankees picked up three runs in the third and one in the fourth. The one in the fourth was Dalton's home run. Here's Keller up again. A 10 hitter. Swings. There's a long drive way out in the center. Kraft is on his mule. He's got to ride him fast and pulls it down in deep center field. Around 400 to 35 to 440 feet away. It's only 461 feet straight out to where that ball was hit. Tremendous blast, but with plenty of pastorage out there, Harry Kraft went back and got it. Now it's two up and two down. Pass to the eight. Batteries Joe DiMaggio has one, four, three. Right hand hitter, defense toward left. Wallace pitches a curve on the outside. Ball one. Four to nothing. Over the Yankees. Reds have been held to one hit in eight full innings. Pearson went seven in the third perfect inning. Ball giving up a hit. DiMaggio takes a curve low outside. Ball two. Ball is behind 2-0. Now has to come in. DiMaggio gets a hold of that stick. Swings as a slow roller toward the left side. Myers charges it, picks it up, throws off balance to first in time. And that's all for DiMaggio. Just that first base short to first. And it's nothing across as Wallace now has started setting the Yankees down just as easily as you'll find... Your Gillette Tech Razor and Gillette Bluebeard sets down those whiskers. So at the end of eight full innings, it is four runs, nine hits, and no errors for the Yankees. No runs, one hit, and no errors for the Reds. Start the ninth inning, it's Billy Myers, first up. Then will come Bucky Wallace, unless McKechnie wants to use a pinch hitter. Followed by the top of the order, Bill Werber. What we shall see from our vantage point here in the Mutual Broadcasting Systems booth at Yankee Stadium, we will see. At the moment, what we're seeing is Monty Pearson, who has pitched magnificently. Magnificently. No matter what your feelings are in baseball, you can only applaud a competitor who's been as efficient as Pearson. He's been cold-bloodedly efficient. Nothing spectacular, just like an almost inhuman machine. Now, Pearson, the right-hander, Ready, Dickey goes down and is crouched back to the plate. The Yankee infield of Darwin, the offense is star of the series so far. Gordon at second, Rosetti at short, and Roth at third is straight away. Billy Myers in the crouch, over two. Takes the 
takes the first pitch for a strike. Pass the board right through there. Lee Campbell swinging a couple of war clubs on deck. Utility outfield left hand hitter. Finally up there to bat for Wallace. Pearson comes down overhand. High outside curve. One and one. The outfield is Selkirk in left. Seems to be poised to go over toward the line. DiMaggio is in left center at the moment. Seems to be coming the same way. Kellen right. Myers takes a curve. He just missed outside. The ball to Billy started to go in on that. Then says, uh-uh. I think I'll take it. Two and one. First man up in the ninth. Anything can happen in baseball, World Series or otherwise, and let's see. The pitch is swung on, hit right back to Pearson, and what's going to happen now is an out. Pitch to first, as there it is. Pearson to Dahlgren. Lee Campbell is definitely to hit for Bucky Waters. One up, one down. Myers thrown out. Pearson to Dahlgren. Pitch to first. Campbell making his first appearance now in any World Series. Left hand hitter, tall, slender, takes a strike. Pearson coming right through there. Bucky Walters is through. Lee Campbell has been hitting for it. Pearson throws. Campbell swinging, fouls it straight back. Strike two. Lee backs out of there. Up to pinch hit. Quickly had two strikes gotten on him. One out. Swinging stretch, right hands it through the head, swung on and fouled, back of first base on the ground. Jimmy Wilson goes over, picks it up. Meanwhile, a new ball's put in place, so Jimmy throws this one out. Weber on deck to hit next. Four to nothing. Able the Yankees. Gamble pitch hitting. No balls, two strikes. Houston throws. Just misses it on the outside with a curve. Ball one. One and two. Step wide at third base. The outfield is straight away on Gamble. They don't play him to pull. Pearson delivers. Gamble swinging, fouls it out past left field. One and two. Pearson's ready. Gamble alert the crowd. Says the throw. Swung on and missed for strike three. And that is the eighth strikeout for Marty Pearson this afternoon. And now. Two are up, and two are down. Stepping up is Billy Werber. Pearson, so far, in eight and two-thirds innings, has allowed two men to get on. A walk to Werber in the fourth, and that was a race on a double play. And then Lombardi's sharp single to center field in the eighth. He only hit for the National League is today. Pearson pitches to Werber, who swings, hits it sharply through the left side for a second base hit. A sharp single into left field, bounded through the hole between third and short. Wherever that's his first base hit in the classic, that is the second of Pearson. And with just one out left to them, the Reds are still swinging. A sharp single by Werber to left field. That is hit number two of Pearson. Hit number 11 in the ball game. And here is the red leg wire of number 11, Linus Price stepping in, looking for first, his first hit in the classic. Jim on over set. Outfield toward right. Right in there. Strike. Nothing in one. Werber court. Werber court. Cleveland anything. Two out, Red Dogan is only holding him halfway off. Pearson delivers on the outside. Or one. One and one. Four to nothing. Favor the Yankees. Pearson trying to finish with as much style as he can. Big jug. And that big jug. One and fouled into the one and two. Four and Set the spikes underneath his right shoe on pitcher's plate. Looks like over his left shoulder at first. Knock him down out of his stretch pauses. Throws, fire swings, hits it down to deep short. Cruzetti's up with it, throws over to Gordon. Gordon steps on second for the out of the ball game. Force play at second base. Cruzetti to Gordon. Score prize, of course, out. And for the Reds in the top of the ninth inning, no runs, one hit. And one man left. And there you have the ball game this afternoon for the Yankees to take their second straight in this series. And their fourth straight since the beginning of this series of last year. The Yankees, four runs... Nine hits and an errorless defense. For the Reds, not a run, two hits and no errors. And we've just been looking back through the record book. And on quick notice, we find that Pearson this afternoon has equaled, has equaled Ruback's two hitter. Two hitter of 19-6 against the White Sox. And I believe that is the low hit pitching for the World Series in the modern times. A two hitter. It's a two-hit shutout for Monty Pearson this afternoon, who really had it. 
other end. Lucky Walters bore down courageously, carefully enough, but he ran into grief in the third inning. And for a ball skidding out of Wally Burgess, for a ball skidding out of Wally Burgess. Of course, one run was already for a ball skidding out of Wally Burgess. It isn't the old red hit firm. It isn't the old red hit firm. It's to be talking about uh, at the moment and uh, getting ready to come on and settle down for a chat. So once again, the totals for the winning Yankees, their second straight, four runs, nine hits, and no errors. And for the Reds, no runs, just two hits and no errors. Well, Bob, you just come right in now, my boy, and everybody's waiting. All right, Red, thanks. Fine, that was a swell job. You know, friends, Saturday at 1.15 Eastern Standard Time, we'll greet you from Crosley Field in Cincinnati with another play-by-play -play account of this great World Series battle between the New York Yankees and the Cincinnati Reds. Grantland Rice, Veteran Sports Authority, will be on hand to give you a vivid word picture of how the Queen City of the Middle West welcomes its returning warriors for the first game of the series back on their own home grounds. And Red Barber and I will be back to give you a rapid-fire running story of what happens out there in the diamond. Yourself a good turn. Step over to your dealers and buy one of those easy-shaving Gillette Tech razors, spelled T-E-C-H, Tech, and five Gillette Blue Blades. Well, it's going to be my job today to sum up. I think as uh, Red has already given you sort of an idea, it can almost be summed up in one word, and that's person. We might throw in two extra words, put Yankees in for one and Babe Dolphin in for the other. And you have a pretty good picture of just what's happened in this ballgame out here today. Joe McCarthy... Instead of having his veteran left-hander, Lefty Gomez, to shoot in there in that second game, as Red and I have seen for the last four or five World Series that we've worked, comes through with a right-hander today, Monty Pearson. As you know, Pearson or Gomez has been ailing for a while. Who's had previous World Series experience? He pitched in 38, 37, and 36. One made one appearance in each series and won a game in each case. And now he's done the same thing here. And so Pearson's record now is four World Series, one game in each series, and a victory in each game. And I think that you'll agree that that's a mighty, mighty fine record. Against him, we found the start hearted Bucky Walters, who's had a marvelous record all season long for the Cincinnati Reds, with 27 victories and 11 defeats. Bucky pitched, you'll have to admit, pitched pretty good ball out here today. He did run into only one real bad inning. That was the third inning when the New York Yankees punched five hits. Let's just take a look over this uh, for the benefit of those of you who might have tuned in late in the ball game and just point out the hits that were made in the ball game and where the scoring occurred. For the Yankees, in the first inning, there was one hit that was made by Cressetti. There was no trouble on it. There was a single by Cressetti, then there was a force out, another force out, and they fly ball to the outfield. In the second inning, after one out, after Bill Dickey had struck out, Selkirk singled. There was no further harm in the inning because uh, Gordon went out right after that, and there was a double play, no runs and one hit. In the third inning, Babe Dolbins, in the third inning, Babe Dolbins, with a man on the ball down, couldn't make a play at the plate, and what proved to be the followed by a hit by Maggio and a hit by the inning were three runs inning after the first he's made the first home run of the series. Against that, they hit that ball off, but he hit it. it was a real long drop shot. As it went back into about the fielder, ball leaped up into the eighth or ninth row, I believe it was right the from the plate. It was right the from the plate of the Yankees' next inning, one mark in two inning. Catch up, Billy Myers. So, so. Walk in the ball game, and that walk was issued by Pearson to Werber in the fourth inning for the only walk of the game. Uh, all in all, it was a fairly exciting ball game to watch, didn't you think so, Red? Even though the uh, scoring was uh, all one sided here today, and the Reds have been close enough in each one of these games, so the thing could have gone either way, didn't you think? Well, Bob, it was a great ball game because baseball always gives you the double edged opportunity to either see a great contest or else, as was the case of Pearson this afternoon, to else see a great performer in action hanging up something that was good enough to go into the record books as an all-time tie. And of course, uh, yesterday's ball game was just a full meal for the second guesses. You remember the buzzing around all last night, right? And I should say so. Red, uh, now we're going to uh, Crosley Field in Cincinnati, and uh, there is a definite, I think, don't you, uh, a, the home team does have a definite edge, don't you think so? I rather think that the Reds, getting back home in those familiar surroundings, uh, will have a little bit of an edge back there in their own ballpark, and I really look for them to cut up quite some capers back there in Crosley. Field. Well, definitely, I expect that, Bob, and as far as uh, being at home, naturally you feel more at home. You have your own fans with you, and of course you
course, you know how true it is in football that the home club is always a lot tougher than if it were on the road. And, of course, the one big advantage is that pitchers who are used to working in a ballpark know how to pitch to try and take advantage of the area of the ballpark because all parks vary. And certainly the outfielders are playing at home. And in Cincinnati, you have a terrace growing up around most of the outfield fences. And the outfielders used to playing 77 games a year there know how to get up on that terrace. And they also know without even looking just how close they can come to the wall. In the case of Goodman yesterday, when he was going after Keller's triple in the ninth inning, he didn't know exactly how close he was to the concrete wall out there in right center. And he had to steal a quick uh, second sneak. And uh, for all we know, that may have cost him absolutely catching the ball. Red, uh, what do you think about the pitchers for Cincinnati? I think it'll be Junior Thompson, Lefty Gomez. What do you think? Well, Bob, that would probably seem to be, uh, during the last two innings, sneaking in the Yankee bullpen and getting a little work, which may be a tip-off as to what Joe McCarthy is going to do, was no less a person than uh, Vernon Gomez himself, who was limbering up out there. Certainly, he wasn't limbering up to come in this ballgame this afternoon. And as far as Thompson is concerned, McKechnie announced before the start of the series that he was his number three pitcher. Of course, uh, behind 2-0, uh, you don't know uh, what the candidate Scott will have to come up with, whether he'll try and come back with Derringer or whether he will try and stake it on Thompson. Anyhow, uh, there is one thing I would like to say, and that is uh, the reactions of Goodman and Derringer before the ball game this afternoon. Goodman, when asked about that catch, says, well, I should have caught it. I got no excuses to make, no explanations, no alibis. And when we asked Derringer how he felt about yesterday's ball game, he said, well, I wouldn't take back a single pitch. He said, as far as I was concerned, I gave the best I had, pitch by pitch, and I wouldn't take back a single one. Spoken like a couple of ball players, and Bob, I'm like you. I'm looking forward to seeing the floodgates open there on the banks of the Ohio starting day after tomorrow at Cincinnati. I should say so. Well, Red, don't miss that train tonight, and I'm sure we're going to see some grand games there in Cincinnati. Fans, regardless of where you've listened to this ball game, of course, our network, the Mutual Network, has arranged uh, for the broadcast of these World Series games a network of international scope. So I don't know where you might happen to be listening to this ball game, but wherever you happen to be listening to it, we do hope that this broadcast, as Red and I have told you about it today, has given you a very, very enjoyable afternoon. This is the largest network of a World Series game in World Series history. So wherever you happen to have caught this game this afternoon, we do hope that you've enjoyed it, and we hope that you'll be with us for the broadcast of the next game, which will be on Saturday. Remember, the third game of the 1939 World Series will be brought to you from Crosley Field in Cincinnati by Gillette, Saturday afternoon at 1.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, over the station to which you are now listening. Tonight, Red Barber and I leave on the baseball special without our good friend Stan Lomax, by the way, whose broadcasting commitments will keep him here in New York City. Just a closing summary for the day again, the Yankees four runs, nine hits, and no errors. The Cincinnati Reds, no runs, two hits, and no errors. The winning pitcher, Pearson, and the losing pitcher, Lucky Walters. Now this is Bob Elson saying goodbye, hoping you've enjoyed the broadcast, and leaving with you men as my parting thought for the day. Remember, the Gillette Tech Razor with the Gillette Blue Blade for the finest shave that you ever enjoyed. Goodbye all, we now return you to our New York studios.